Welcome everyone to the ninth day of OTRS Central Christmas and what a great day this is going to be because I get two questions more often than you think. Number one, what is the Breakfast Club? And number two, how does one become a member of said Breakfast Club? If you don't know the answer to number one, then shame on you. Number two, it's a good question. It's a fair question. And the Schleg Daddy is here to deliver the answer to you today, unequivocally, once and for all, based off of the Breakfast Club's very own bylaws. Here are officially the nine steps to join WWE's Breakfast Club. And I can't wait to share this wealth of knowledge with all of you. Step one. Be white. Just like WWE, it's the first and arguably most important critical step to your own success. Some of you might say, well, what about Batista? He's half Filipino. Well, then if you look at 1-B, it says, more importantly, don't be black. They can tolerate the occasional tainting of the white blood, but they will not tolerate the black man in the breakfast club. Number two, stay away from the indies. Only the WWE can teach you the WWE way. Let the nerds flip and kick and dive and do all this fake looking crap. It's the real stars, it's the real money makers, the real top guys in WWE that understand rest holds and poses are the keys to success. You don't learn that on the indies. You learn that in the WWE. And when you look at Orton, Cena, Triple H, they didn't spend years upon years on the independent scene. You could say, well, they spent a little bit of time. Let's not get too technical. You know what I mean. Daniel Bryan is not a member of the Breakfast Club. It doesn't matter if he married a Bella. It doesn't matter if he put a daughter in a Bella. It doesn't matter that it may be previously have said that he is said member of Breakfast Club. Ultimately... His time in the Indies for the number of years that he was there automatically disqualify him. And maybe he had one short stretch in his career where he was the breakfast club killer. But too much time in the Indies. Too much time. You just can't get that stain, that stink off of him. Step three, become lifting buddies with Hunter. It can't possibly hurt to spot Hunter when he's doing his squats, because you never know when a quad's going to drop. God needs a workout buddy he can trust, that he can count on, that he can rely upon. See Seamus. Number four, bury young talent. It's about today, not tomorrow. Any bright-eyed, bushy-tailed geek can sit there and think about what's going to happen one, three, five years down the road. It takes somebody special to live in the moment, to live in the here and now, that says these guys might be great someday, but there's only one you. And you could find a hundred other of these ham and egger, Johnny come lately, young jobber bitches. But the proven commodity, the one you can count on, that's what the focus is, and that's where the emphasis must be. Number five, bury other top talents meaning those not in said breakfast club. Once you get that top spot, you can't share it. Being unselfish is good my ass. There's only so much money to go around. There's only so many main events to go around. There's only so many big payouts and featured spots to go around. We just can't be passing them out like they're Halloween candy. The business is incredibly limited today. And as a result, those that understand that it is about protecting their spot, protecting their money, protecting their main events, get the most toys. Get yours, bitches. That's what the Breakfast Club is all about. See, Hunter, at age 47, 48, it's still about him. Survivor Series was about setting up to three potential future WrestleMania matches. Forget about Shane McMahon, forget about Kurt Angle, forget about Jason Jordan, number four if you want to go say, forget about Braun Strowman, it's about Triple H, and it's about that WrestleMania spot, and the skill with which he navigates the political minefield of the backstage area of WWE. 
you bury the young talent and then you bury the other top talent too. There could be no pretenders to the throne. There could be no real threats. Number six, job only when it makes you look good and benefits you. See John Cena. Don't job when it does matter. See the Nexus. See Bray Wyatt. See Rusev. Often job when it doesn't matter. See the past couple of years of John Cena's career. But most importantly of all, you either A, only job to those who are guaranteed to return the favor to you, see Randy Orton, see a Sheamus, or B, you job to those that make you look better because they do a bunch of bumps for you, see Kevin Owens, see AJ Styles, see Shinsuke Nakamura, and ultimately job to those guys that the hardcore fans will like you jobbing to, and as a result, they will hate you less. Again, see John Cena. He has been the master of this. Mwah. Job when it is only beneficial to you. As we know it, the Hulk Hogan philosophy of doing things. Number seven, multiple straight to DVD WWE Studios movies. Whether it being a chaperone, whether it's legendary, whether we feel like getting all military and becoming a Marine, Forget Hollywood, Titan Tower Wood is where the real stars shine. Anybody could go off to Hollywood and do those stupid movies, but it takes a real star to stay in-house and do it and shine within the WWE's parameters, and that's important. And when you think about multiple straight-to-DVD WWE Studios movies, You've got the guys like the Cena's. You've got the guys, more importantly, like Orton and Triple H and Batista. It's there. Shawn Michaels, if you want to go with a, a freaking retro kind of grandfather pick, it's all there. And they all do it. And they do it so well. Number eight. And this is so critically important because you can get all seven of these previous steps. But if you can't make daughters and can't make daughters consistently, The Breakfast Club has no place for you. Randy Orton makes daughters. Batista makes daughters. God himself makes daughters. And before some of you Weisenheimers sit there and say, well, Shawn Michaels has a son and a daughter. Have you done any DNA testing to confirm that son is his? I don't think so. One of his kids is a freaking ginger. Where the hell did that come from? So I refuse to believe either one of those kids is his. And if there is one to be his, it ultimately would be his daughter because, again, he is a member of the Breakfast Club. Ultimately, the Breakfast Club is about making daughters. And now that I think about it, even with all the time in the indies and all of that, Daniel Bryan's white. He's done his part to bury some talents. More importantly, he jobs when it makes him look great. But most importantly of all, even with skipping sex, step, step seven, he made a daughter. That is so critical. And that can make up for other deficiencies and other shortcomings. So maybe you know what Daniel Bryan can be back in the breakfast club again. Because ultimately, if you make sons, there's no place for you. It's about daughters, daughters, daughters. That's the key. And it all brings me to step nine to joining WWE's Breakfast Club. It's getting the Schleg Daddy's seal of approval. That's me. If you don't get my approval, this is how it works. You're not a member of the Breakfast Club, period. And some of you may think that's crazy or stupid or retarded. You're crazy, you're stupid, and you're retarded. The bottom line is, the Breakfast Club is my shtick. It is my gimmick. And if somebody ever becomes a member of the Breakfast Club, it is of my doing. It is of my saying at a time that I choose. Some of you look at Roman Reigns and assume he's got to be a Breakfast Club member now. He hasn't buried nearly enough young talent and barely enough other top talent in order to have earned that right to overcome the fact that he's already not white. Yeah, he stayed away from the Indies. Clearly, he's lifting and drinking buddies with Hunter. And he jobs when it makes him look great. But where are the multiple WWE studio straight-to-DVD movies? He's made a daughter. That's great, but that's one. I've made a daughter. That doesn't automatically make me a Breakfast Club member, does it? Does it? I don't think so. Ultimately, 
if you satisfy all of these steps or most of these steps and you do it in such a manner that you stand out or cut above the rest, then you then and only then may indeed get the Schleg Daddy seal of approval. And when that happens and only when that happens and at no other time does it happen, that's when you become a member of the Breakfast Club. So, until said otherwise, your Breakfast Club members are Triple H, John Cena, Randy Orton, Shawn Michaels, Batista. Shawn Michaels kind of your legacy pick. Daniel Bryan is half a member. Roman Reigns is on his way, but he's not there yet until I fucking say he is. And that, I hope, answers the eternal question once and for all. What does it take to become a member of the Breakfast Club? Well, the Schleg Daddy just gave you, mm, easy for me to count, nine steps on how you can join WWE's Breakfast Club. And this has been the ninth day of OTRS Central Christmas, and it was a special one. And ho, 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 I hope all of you enjoyed it. Tune in next time for the eighth day of OTR Essential Christmas, which is a topic that I have yet to determine. And remember, at OTR Essential, it's not the wrestling show you want. Like this video here, it's just the wrestling show you need. See you later.